to join in and um, as we go along if you have questions or if you have any input on things you've used and know how it works or not feel free to add that. And this is just a little uh, chopped uh, tube chop of um, a version of what the students are saying for and uh, you may have seen this we clipped part of this for the vision of students for today. if you haven't used it before we'll take a YouTube video and allow you to chop the part of the video that you would like to show or share with somebody so um, it is a great resource so that you don't have to play a whole long video so if you haven't used it before just going to tubechop.com and then you'll take the clip that you're working with paste it in there and then you can play around with cutting it from the front or back end of the video and try to make it the length that you would like it to be so I think that's really helpful when you're thinking about things in the classroom that you just want to show a clip, but not the whole thing, and you don't want to just remind yourself where to stop it. It allows you to get that. It only takes a few minutes, too. It's really easy to use. So, All right, so back to our next one. The other school district out in Alabama did another version of this, and I'm sure you've seen these different ones, but a lot of the school districts and kids are creating their own videos similar to that. So the first one area we're going to show today is Socrative, and I'm not sure if you've heard of it or have you ever used it yourself in the classroom, just to um, see it as I ask you. No? Okay, so it's a great way to engage the students in having like their own response device instead of having to have a device, like an old um, setup of student response tools that you might have. Um, a box of those and you know that is expensive to buy so this is like a free resource it allows you to not have very many devices you can rely on a student if you have students that bring their own um, smartphones and they can use those together you might have 
you know, five students that have a device in the classroom and you can group them up and share it. Or if you have iPads or Android devices or computers yourself to use in the classroom, you can also use it that way. Um, the thing that you can also do that I've seen is that up in uh, Monterey at the aquarium, they have some programs set up for students to do summer camps and they actually get donations of used and old cell phones from you know anyone in the community and they just put it out there that they need these devices and they just take out the um, actual sims card or whatever that is that you would actually need for the internet connection and go onto the wi-fi at the school itself you don't have to actually have a data plan with the phone and then they can use that wi-fi connection to go and use this um, socrative as their tool so um, it's been used by kids that are young or high school students it doesn't really matter the age um, there's a few things, and I'll share this with you um, to have as a resource afterwards, but there's um, a page of PD, uh, PDF that has all different device, sorry, different ideas of what you can use for this particular Socrative, and it has um, some things that might work out in your classroom. And then another one that I have here also is another way that, uh, 13 ways to use it for assessment. So, um, those are just some resources available to you afterwards if you would like to look at them. Um, so what Socratic does is a whole bunch of different things and I'm just going to, I have a couple of little short clips here and I'm just going to play and Hi, I'm Bob Oh, that was weird. Jumped out of my uh, slide mode. Let's see if I can get it back there. Because I have more than one on the page. Hi, I'm Bob Irving from Lancaster Country Day School, Lancaster, PA, and I'm here to tell you about something amazing that I've just started using in my history classes. It's called Socrative. It's free, and basically what it is is a response system. Students can use any device with it, and my kids love it. So here I have it on the iPad. I can create a quiz or some sort of a review activity. It's also available on Android, iPhone, and it's web-based. My students come in every day to class and ask them, the first question they ask is, do we bring our iPhones today? It's a win-win. So I know that my students loved using their phones in class, and so to be able to turn that around and have a student group up and text something back to you with it, it's a great way. Here's a sample here, just real briefly, just um, showing some of the different um, kids in the classroom here teaming up together with the one device that they might have within that group. Or again, if you got those as donations, you might only have a small amount. You can also use it with an iPod Touch. Um, so some of the kids are on the phones, and then some were on a computer itself in the back of the classroom if you have limited resources of technology several ways of making this um, work within your classroom. So that's one example. Stop that one. And this one was just showing that way that the younger students were engaging in this. I'm Tavia Wright. I teach third grade at Oaks Elementary. Today we're going to be doing a quick home group lesson where I'm using an app called Socrata. It's like a clicker system and it lets the whole class respond and we can see the results. Um, it's a really neat way for me to see how my kids are doing and if I need to reteach something or enrich my students. After our whole group lesson, the students are going to work in partners and they're going to be on the site called Edmodo. They're completing some practice with some of the skills we've been learning. That happen now. When we have the subject that's singular, which means one. One. one, because what, we know that the word single is similar to the word singular. We add the S, and with verbs that end in our special ending, similar to with our plural nouns when we did that, we add the ES. We have the Y to I, adding ES rule. A, it's because com comes doesn't really make sense, so it has to be A, so it's come. We add a N for A, and one for B. I'm going to see if we can explain so just stopping there, you're seeing that the younger kids can then go into that device and it can come as an app 
or they can be directly logged into the actual website to get the answer driven back to them. So you don't have to actually post the, um, the actual question on the board. You can use it in different ways of showing it. You can have it written, you can verbally say the question, different um, choices for the kids to select answers can be true, false, multiple choice, open-ended questions. So it's a great way to kind of engage them. So I'm gonna just give a quick demo and then we'll do a little practice with it and see if you guys can um, test it with me. This will just show you um, a few of the basics that are in it. There's space races and exit tickets that are really great resources. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit of this. How I use it in the classroom. Soccer is a web-based application that allows teachers to quickly and effectively facilitate discussions and assess student learning. After creating an account, each teacher is assigned a room number. Once students forever. enter the room, teachers are given a variety of tools that they can use to interact with their students. <coughs> they can easily ask their students multiple choice questions, true false, short answer, or even start a quiz or an exit ticket. For example, if a teacher wants to ask his or her students a multiple choice question, they click the multiple choice button, and on the student's screens, the students can answer whatever question is asked. I like it because it only gives the students the answer options. It is really easy to display the questions on the projector, ask them out loud, or write them on the board, and I don't have to fuss with typing in all the answer options every time I want to ask a question. It is also really easy to create and assign quizzes and exit tickets. Here I have a variety of exit tickets I have pre-created, and I can assign them whenever I need to with a few simple clicks. Let me show you how easy it is to create a quiz. The first thing you do is select Manage Quizzes, then click Create Quiz. Then I can choose whether I want to add a multiple choice question or open any questions. It is really easy to type your questions, type in the answers, select the correct answer, and then move on. Once your quiz has been created, you'll have access to it from the menu of previously created quizzes. And at any time, you can go back in, select the quiz, and have a report sent to your email based on the student's results for that quiz. Probably one of the coolest features is you can take any of these quizzes that you've created and turn it into an interactive classroom game, which is called a space race. To start a space race in your class, select the quiz that you want to have turned into a game, select the number of teams you want to have, and you can choose whether or not you want to auto-assign the teams, click next, and the game is off and running. Let me show you how it works in my class. And the other team's off under the lead, followed by green, the red's on the board, followed by pink. Oh, and the red team is now gone to green, yellow and red are in a three-way tie. Yellow is still on the lead, followed by green, then pink, then blue, then red, then purple, then black. Oh, and purple is holding up. There's four-way lead with blue and pink, not too far. Alright, so on this space race, it's really fun. I've done a demo with some students at a school district up in Marin, and the kids had not used it, and they went crazy when I actually um, introduced this to them because they were super high-level thinking kids, and then to have a different way of answering it as a team, they really liked the competition, and I don't think it really matters what grade you are that the kids like that competition. So as well as at a conference, I've had um, a presenter do this for the adults in the room and all of us really like to pull out our device and, and, and engage in the conversation by not having to take it on our laptop or something else. It was through our phone and we were all able to see our results very quickly and have it right there in front of everybody. So it helped with the um, presenter in that case or the teacher to be able to see where the assessment of the kids were. So it's a great also an alternative to an exit ticket to leaving the classroom. You could either do it as a space race or as um, an actual exit ticket, which they have that as one of the options that I like to do. At the end of the period, you're able to kind of get an idea, did this lesson sink into them or do I need to revisit certain concepts or not? So it's a really good, really useful thing. So on to the next one I'm gonna share here, Let's see if we can get this on the next slide to go is that it does come in as an app for a teacher app that you can put onto your actual smartphone um, or onto an iPad and then you also have a student app so that they can actually go to it and if not then the students simply would log into the m.socratic.com and that redirects them to the student login and you always are assigned your permanent room number as a teacher so they if you start this they'll get used to that number and they'll have it available to them all the time 
So I'm actually going to see if you guys can do it with me. If you don't mind joining this, go to this web login right here, m.socratic.com. And my room number is 241796. And again, I've used old smartphones and old uh, iPod touches that I've seen as a great way to kind of help get this being implemented in the class. Yeah, let's see if I can get this one. And if you guys are logged in, I'm gonna turn it on for you guys to start. And do you have access to that um, Socratic right now? Going through? Not yet, Tracy. What's your room number again? 241796. And I see. Do we need to be like in your class? To Pardon? Do we need to be in your class or any name is good? Oh, any name's fine. It's whatever you want to put. And we can go ahead and then you can answer through the questions and see how you do on the first one as a demo. Hold on. Did it let you in? 241796? Yeah, I'm in. Okay, great. I just typed one the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really that simple for them to just have that little login and then that, you know, six digit number, room number. And you can post that in a classroom on the wall and continue to use it all year long. And what I like is right now we're able to actually see uh, the results that are coming through for your answers. Oh, we're supposed to go ahead and answer? Yep. <laughs> and uh, you have four questions there. Two are multiple choice and two are open-ended. Um, and so you would type in a short answer for those two, and uh, they're kind of, um, you can also have true-false answers as well. And then as we get the fourth question in for everybody, then I will show you what the demo will look like for pulling up our, our answers to those questions. And if you don't know the answers, just make a random guess today. because, <laughs> Or think of the website that we're on. The name has a lot to do with it. With all the things that we have. So... Oh. And as you see, the um, you don't get to go back and spell correctly. <laughs> and it's nice because if you choose an answer and then you realize you don't want it, it still lets you select a different one. So as you go along, and it look like I didn't even put my um, name spelled correctly up there. It also, as you saw that um, came along, um, you might have saw that I had an image embedded in there for you to look at, um, and it allows you to um, look at the image, uh, add an image to anything or a link or a video along the way. And you'll see that the answers end up coming in um, green for right answers. So the first one was asking about uh, which president was not a teacher at one time in their life, and it was actually Ronald Reagan. And so, um, and if we go ahead and hit, if I'm gonna hit finish here, and it'll let me download my results, or view them, or even put them into Google Drive, or look at them later. So I'm gonna do it as a view chart, and I hit submit. And what it will do is I hit get report and I want it as a spreadsheet or if I wanted an individual student's results or a specific question, I can get those as PDFs. So I hit submit, it downloads for me and I can open that up as an Excel sheet here. And you'll see it has all the info for you to remember it. And the question here, which of the following American presidents was not a K-12? or a college teacher, Ronald Reagan, who was Socrates, or Socrates, sorry, I'm saying that wrong. And it was uh, three choices there, philosopher and teacher and painter were the three answers that he was all three of them. So if you got part of it, 
did good. It didn't say that you had to answer all, you know, pick every answer in that one. So you can be real specific on the question or kind of let them choose that there could be more than one answer. And then we were looking at the Socratic method as the form of inquiry and debate based on asking and answering questions to stimulate and engage classroom discussions. And then in your opinion, this is obviously just an open-ended one, will mobile technology improve education? And so we think all different ways, yes, and then only if we're getting the students to actually engage and use it. So, all right, so that's a demo of that. I really think it's a great resource and it's something that you could kind of apply in different ways into your class. And this is what the dashboard looks like. You could either do the quick question or the um, exit ticket or the quiz or the space race. And, and then here you get to choose how many teams and the color and start the activity and kind of choose it based on a quiz that you created applying to whatever you're working on in the classroom. So any questions on those ones right now? Okay, so next one we're gonna go on to, oh, and actually I'm just gonna do this for a moment. This was um, showing the students using it in a lab setting. somebody else perform an online effective Google search. So he's using it with multiple devices and then just verbally asking the questions in this case instead of having Okay, it looks like we have two responses so far. And then having it projected on the wall for yourself to see how they all Yes, this is a and uh, I don't know if you heard right there, but the student asked, is this anonymous? And so the teacher will not be able to look and see what student answered a certain um, answer. And um, the students then feel a little more comfortable with being honest about their answers and really truly giving you an idea. Are you um, really understanding things or not? And it's just no one in the room will know if Billy or Sarah answered a question. It's just an anonymous blank answer for when they project it onto the screen. So that's a really good, to me, a really helpful resource that you're not actually putting any one student on the spot. So, all right, the next one that we are going to cover is Padlet. And it's basically a wall where you can get students or yourself to put a bunch of ideas and links or lesson plans to share and then allow the students to collaborate onto that wall or have other teachers collaborate with you or basically putting a whole lesson out there and pushing it to your students and letting them uh, use the wall as the actual lesson plate itself. So uh, there's a gallery that they show here of all the different kind of samples of some of the what they look like. They're, um, they'll always have a title. You can put a, a description under it and then you can put all these are considered little tags that would be part of the text box that you get to write into. And you get to put a wallpaper onto it, whatever the background may be that you want to have it look like. So I'll go back to this and I'll, I'll show you my demo of mine uh, with you and you guys can try it with me. And we'll do a little brief heading here. This is Padlet, an online tool that lets all of your students participate in discussions. I'm going to start by building the wall and this is already ready to go. You have a, a unique URL address up here but I kind of want to change it so I'm going to click over and modify this wall those little gears and everything you need is over here. So I'm going to start by giving it a title so I can find it later and I'm going to click on wallpaper. You can add your own background or one of the options they give you. 
As far as layout, it's pretty much as you see here, freeform, they can put them, their posts anywhere and you can rearrange them um, or stream a little bit more linear and organized. Privacy by default gives you a hidden link, but I'm also going to add moderate posts because I have a few silly kids in my class that I want to see what they write before it gets posted to everyone so they can all see it. Very good control for you as a teacher. So I'm going to submit. Um, one more thing I want to do here, I'm going to click back on Modify Well. I'm going to click on this address part. Um, this is nice if uh, students need to type into the browser, finding an easy URL. So I'm going to come up with, let's see, MC Usher. Let's see if it's available. Yep. So I'm going to change my URL. So now all they have to do is write that URL in, and it's pretty simple. Uh, you could also copy this URL or the one you had before and make a QR code if students had access to mobile devices. It just changed right over there. So I can just project that on the screen. Now I'm going to come back over to my wall. I'm going to give this a little bit more information. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to put in my name. And I'm going to ask a question. What do you think about MC Shows or and then I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to add um, a video. So I'm going to grab this video. This is a YouTube video. I'm going to copy it, come back over. There's my link and paste it in. Just like that, I have a wall ready for kids to access and watch the video. And all they do is just double click and they type in their name and write something for it. That's it. So I think it's really a cool way for students to be able to engage back after they've seen either kind of like a way of flipping your classroom, showing a video, and then getting their feedback, and you have it all in one place for that classroom to respond to what you just posted. Um, so there are there's several ways that you can use it, and there's endless ways of being shown in the gallery, so if you want to look at that afterwards, but if you guys will help with me, oops, go back. Um, if you'll go to padlet.com and it's slash tfees slash tech talk demo and it looks like my O got moved down but if you go ahead in that will allow us to go to my padlet together and it should pull up a picture of an old train and if you guys don't mind, I just put the question I posted. Um, I, you would put your name in there. Tell us what you teach and give one example of technology you've tried or would like to try in the classroom. Something that you might have heard of or think that might be a good way to share something with your students. And all you'll do is click somewhere on that <coughs> wall and you'll start typing and it will allow you to and I think I have them all set up as a linear post today. It will allow you to put any kind of info. If you wanted to post the video like we just saw, that would be another resource to use. So, um, all right, so Minecraft is definitely very popular right now. I'm using that minecraft.edu as a great resource for the kids. Seems like they're in love with that. And <laughs> so, um, when I was teaching technology, we didn't have the uh, .edu version available for our students, and they were itching for that in the worst way. So, so I got to put up here, Hyper Studio. Who Hyper remembers it? I remember that. <laughs> wow. Long I've been long. out of the classroom a long time. Yeah. <laughs> what is uh, the Globe Project? Do you mind sharing? telling what that is? Uh, data collection from a weather station that's shared worldwide with scientists and other students. Oh, great. So yeah. then they can go in and collect the data. And that would be Just, something that would be really useful if you end up tying it into a collaborative project with Google Docs or um, something within Google. That it's, would be great it's worldwide data collection that scientists use and other students, connects other students. So they can connect it and then maybe then working it into some kind of lesson within your classroom. Mm -hmm. so, and experiments. Um, so the kids can also create these too. So it's not just teacher ones that you can do, but they're just, uh, you can create walls and have numerous walls available and it does keep them into your profile. So if you want to go back and revisit them, you'll be able to see them. So I'll show you a couple of my 
think I have a couple of mine in here. Oh, maybe I don't. My um, Padlets are, uh, oh, I know where it is. I do have them. I have this one, which was um, from Grace Dearborn, who was here at the <coughs> County Office of Ed um, presenting. And as she was presenting, instead of me taking notes, I was taking it on my iPad and just typing in little boxes of info that were key highlights from her training that day that I could go back to me and use this a lot easier as a resource than um, looking at my notes that I might forget about that I hand wrote. So that was my one wall that I had from that training. And I also had another one from Alan November who presented down in Ventura County Office of Ed. And as he was going along and he was throwing out a whole bunch of things at once, I was just posting them as I went along so I could keep a record and kind of just taking the, like, the basics down. And as you see, I posted them this way um, in a linear format. But you can also move these around. You can have control of what is posted. And if you do have to worry about what a student might say, then um, add that in your settings like we saw in the little demo video where you don't just have it posted and pops up and all of a sudden something embarrassing is on the screen from a student trying to be kind of rude in class. So you do have control of what actually gets put up there. So it's another thing. I have seen in a large presentation room of this that when you get a lot of people posting at once, um, that it ends up, you can move your answer as the one who controls it. You can move where the positions are, and they kind of start flying in, and um, they started overlapping on each other. So to avoid that, putting it in this linear format makes it easier to read afterwards. So those are, you can cluster them as another format. So you get to choose whenever you set up your wall. You can see the options for how you get to see it. All right, so that's Padlet. And then Symbaloo, my favorite way of putting anything in the cloud and bookmarking it and having a personal learning environment. And basically, students are using it. Um, it's a way of putting visual bookmarks, essentially, for yourself. Organizing all of your materials and having it right there for yourself. And I'm just going to show the intro of this video. It's a little young girl who's actually Welcome to my personal school. learning environment. I've been practicing network learning in my seventh grade science class. I spent some time at the beginning of the year learning how to find information online and how to pull it all together on a personal page. As you can see, there's lots of stuff here. Some things, like my Facebook account and the blocks across the top, are not for school. I organized all my schoolwork along the bottom row. Every morning when I come to class, I visit the science agenda to see what we're doing for the day. Sometimes there are videos to watch or other work to do. Other times, I decide what I need to work on next. One day, we played a game called Pocket Tanks, and I used it to learn how to write an official scientific report. That was created on my Google Docs account and published for anyone to see. We have a lot of animals in our science class. I can create a special report to get certified to hold them, but I have to do research first. I find websites and post them to my social bookmarking account. These are some of the sites I found about the leopard gecko. I posted my certification report on my blog. Now I can hold Sarah during class. I also use my blog for reflections about what I did in class for the day. There's so much information on so she goes in and explain all the things she's using it, but she's basically, as she goes along, each of these can either become a picture of, you can actually put your own picture, or maybe if it's like, for instance, a logo that you have like Google, you can put the logo itself. It will automatically populate a logo for you if it's available, and you can just use that. Sometimes I find that those are really small, and you can't see it, and you may want to just put in a new logo so it's bigger. And you also have the option of writing text right over it at the bottom. And um, that allows you to see some more details to what it is for your symbol. It is, to me, one of the most usable ways for me to go back and remember what I want to use instead of having 
to go into my bookmarks and have a long list of things on my computer that I probably forget and never use again. This is a way to actually use it. And so this was an example of an EdTech one that somebody had, and they have the words underneath here, as you see, or they just have a logo that actually explains it. If it's something that you know, um, it's fine to not put a word, but like Audacity has the little logo of the headset where they can go in and clip video, I mean video or music, well, you might not remember what that little logo is, so adding the words there is really helpful. So here's my web mix for science. And what you can choose is your own background. It looks like it just jumped off of my own web mix. That's not the one I had posted there. And you can choose the background, and you also can end up choosing um, within the science, or sorry, within this, you can share this to any of your colleagues or your students. So your web mix can become a public shared link or a private shared link, and you also can beg and borrow from other teachers and steal theirs as well. So it's all open for collaboration to go in under the um, symbolu.edu as a free account, and you can grab all sorts of web mixes, and each tab is considered a web mix. So each of those at the top would be a web mix. And I do have on this vid, um, presentation that you can come back and revisit, but there was a sample of how to demo of that, what it is, and what would be the way you use that. So you can look at that afterwards. And on here, this is some students that are really um, using it. Like one of the students in here actually has his personal stuff over in this, or things that he's interested in and then all of his projects for school in one corner, and then the things that maybe a class is working on in another corner. So you really can make the squares how you want to. You can expand it out or up. It depends on how big you want it to be. All right, so classroom timers was asked to share for just keeping track as you're going along and kind of um, making sure your pace is going. And so there's this online stopwatch and they have all sorts of different ways of sharing those timers and they'll have the actual sand running through or the little bomb going off for the dynamite which kind of makes it a little more lively when your timer goes off so it's kind of fun they also have right here all these are links to um, things that are countdown timers so you can have that going or check it out periodically if you're looking for something like earth day countdown to it so it's another type of timer besides just having it as a counting timer like these ones. Oops. And then this one, they have a snail, a swimming, and a running race. This one uh, calculates cash as it's going along for every hundred. Um, every time it does the 100, it will give you a penny, so it will show that slowly calculating through. And this one is the rocket, if you end up setting it for 20 seconds and start it, it'll end up burning that end of the rocket and just launch it out at the end of the time that you want them to do something. So there's a lot of timers that are just a little bit more fun than just the basic one that you see every time that might be on the computer. And it as soon as that goes off so that'll stop them to get them back on track for yourselves so all right the next area I just have a couple more to share so that we won't run out of time for you at the end of the day this is um, helping with your seating and your behavior management and ah, there's one of the timers going on. <laughs> and this is a great tool if you have any like SSTs or parent updates that you want to kind of track with them. And it also will help you to, um, allows you to kind of mix up your groups. And so here. Introducing class charts. Seating charts are an essential part of any teacher's toolkit. And managing behavior is necessary for effective learning to take place. So what if you combine the two? How about if your seating chart showed essential data about each pupil and worked intelligently to position pupils based on that data and even showed photos to help you learn student names? How about if you could note behavior at the click of a button and view details of their behavior over time? The answer is an improvement in learning. 
With Class Charts, you can take control of your classroom and collaborate with your colleagues and parents to improve behaviour and learning in your department or school. And it's 100% free. So, a nice free resource. I like her little accent as she describes it to us. So, basically, a great resource to be able to move students around and then communicate directly with the parents and they can actually be set up to have that interaction with you by email through this um, resource so that they are knowing if you wanted to have um, information on a behavior of a student at any point you have that particular um, option in this uh, class chart so that one along with class dojo uh, which uh, maybe in some sense might be a little bit more elementary based than the other one because the other one allows you to use the icons or change the picture and I'm not positive if um, Class Dojo actually allows you to change the pictures. The last one that we looked at, Class um, Charts, allows you to actually interact it with your um, student information system. I believe it's working with PowerSchool right now and it possibly might interact with um, Aries and others and it will put your information in for your students and pictures so you don't actually have to type it all in yourself. So that's kind of a nice resource to have. Um, this class dojo also allows you to use it for your classroom behavior and engaging it with the students um, and the parents so that they're getting a text message or an email back and forth about how your students are engaged in the classroom. And um, they really seem to respond to it because it in reinforces the positive behaviors. So sometimes in the younger grades they'll have a class monitor for the day and they like to rotate that duty and they can actually go around and maybe give points during certain parts of the uh, lesson if students are on track. They get to be the one who watches for people doing their job or something of that nature. If you have one device, a teacher computer or a you know an iPad that a student could go up to and just help monitor that for you while you're working with students, Class Dojo would be kind of that option. It has an app available for you to use and it also has the web-based version available. So I'm not going to play the video that just talks about some of it. I'm going to end it with um, Poll Everywhere, which is just a nice way to use uh, a device that this will show how they're using it in a math class. We'll just look at it briefly. But they were using this in the eighth grade math. To go to pollev.com. They can always go to pollev.com. P O L L E V.com. Now, we're going to start off on number question number two. If you look at number two, your answer is to number two. And I want you to look up there on the board so and see if you can devices. find your answer. Do not punch the code in yet. I need you to wait on the code for a few seconds. So you're going to look for your possible answer. And then you're going to punch in the code. What I want you to do is I want you to punch in 37607. And then, texting and then hit space and then board. choose the answer that all four of you have. And this is the code he's talking when about. I count to three, answers. you're all going to get enter at the same time. And he's able to tell how many okay. words are going to be answering. Right. Right. Let's see. One, two, three. Good way for you to be able to see if your teams are getting the same. And as soon as they probably get that down, then they start using it more often. In this case, they're off of an iPad and they were texting it to get their answer.